What's up, YouTube? So you've decided to do some freelance work. Sweet, we'll hit the brakes. Before you create any work, you need to create, at minimum, a basic contract to protect yourself. You could expand your contract to be even more protective, but you should at least have the content that we discuss in this vid. All right, so once your client has given you an overall description of the project you'll be doing, it'll be your job to send over an estimate or contract for them to sign. This is so that you two are both aligned on how much work is being done and for how much money. Getting a signed contract prior to starting the job is crucial to make sure you guys are aligned and on the same page, and also to keep your client liable for anything that is clearly stated in the contract. So here's my basic contract. One page, simple, to the point, gets the job done. So prior to the fine print, the top of your contract is pretty basic. You have the logo, your company name, the date in which you're writing the initial contract. And I always like to include the job number too. And that's more for my organization so that I can reference it down the road. Then you should put your client's name and the company in which they're representing. So the right of that, a short description that kind of summarizes the overall work in which you'll be doing. All right, for example, we'll carry out web design and development utilizing WordPress. Project details include page design uh, and development, stock searching, and photo editing. Agreed upon web pages include a long scrolling home page, an episodes page, um, an about me page, and a contact form. Hours and pricing are subject to change based on any client revisions, and hours will be billed at a rate of $40 an hour. Next, you should line item each piece with a short description, an estimate of hours, and then an estimated total cost based on your rate. After you've got all your items, make sure to add up all your subtotals and give them that overall total estimated cost. Bold that sucker, make it stand out. Now for the super fun fine print. Keep this at a reasonable font size to avoid any doubt of readability issue. All right, so you're gonna include the following. This agreement is made by and between the client and the designer. In consideration of the mutual agreement made herein, both parties agree as follows. First, you should be super clear in your deliverables. The designer agrees to produce what is described in the project description at the request of the client. These files will be delivered in the following formats. AI, PSD, PDF, and JPEG. That's just an example. Second, you should reiterate what your contract is covering. This contract covers 20 hours of work. Any further time rounds of revisions may exceed estimate, but client will be notified prior to going over hours. It's very important to notify your client prior to going over the original estimate so that there's no surprises when you give that final invoice. So this next one is completely up to you. Some people feel perfectly comfortable not taking payment until that final invoice is sent out, but other people like to have that little safety net or act of good faith from the client to get a little bit of that money up front. Client agrees to pay designer 50% of the total project estimate before any services are provided, and the remaining 50% is to be paid before any workable files are delivered. For number four, you'll want to protect your time and any other expenses that may occur during your project. Any requests declared within one week of their respective deadline are subject to a rush fee of $50 an hour. Any expenses exclusive of normal overhead are not included in this agreement and will be billed separately with client approval. Examples of such expenses are stock photography, printing costs, phone, and in-person consult and travel. All right, so rarely, but occasionally, either the designer or the client will wanna bow out of the contract. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen for a number of reasons. Both parties understand that client or designer may terminate the service at any time if, for any reason, the relationship is deemed unsatisfactory by either party. Upon written or verbal cancellation, client is responsible for payment for all expenses incurred and any work done toward the completion of the project based on the hours completed. A lot of us are very well organized when it comes to saving our files, but it's slightly unreasonable when a client comes back three years later and asks for you to send over a job that you did. Chances are you don't have them anymore or they're archived somewhere and it will cost them a fee for you to go dig those out. Upon delivery, client retains full responsibility of provided files. Designer is not responsible for storage and safekeeping of files. And of course you wanna showcase some of that dope work in your portfolio. So go ahead and throw in number seven. Unless strict confidentiality is requested by client in advance of the establishment of this contract, designer can display materials and final work created for client. 
And then there's that whole super important, you better have it signature thing. All right, so the client promises to pay for the services rendered by designer for the work as agreed upon. By signing below, client agrees they have read, understood, and are considered legally bonded to these terms. Leave a place for them to write their name, sign, and date, and you're pretty much good to go. Once you've received this signed estimate, you got the green light to start the project. Again, this is bare bones, so do further research if you wanna further protect yourself. But do me a favor and at least cover your bases for what's outlined in this video. I wanna give a big shout out to Bomb Pop Design who has some contract templates that you can go download for free in the description below. Yeah, go on, get out of here. Have a good one.